and since I was last recording, I uh, have made a round up this ridge, and I think that I made a wrong turn. So uh, we'll see what we can can locate as far as Corb Isbel's grave. There were a couple of guys camped along the road's edge and they were firing off some high-powered rifles. I'm sure they were just target practicing. But uh, the timing of my dropping into the bottom and then firing off some rounds, I thought, you know, I'm going to take a right right here because I'm not sure whether I should go right or left and I don't want to run right up into them. Don't want to infiltrate their space. So uh, I've made a loop and I'm going to try this again. Okay, I did locate it. I drove right past it twice today. It used to be quite a bit nicer. I've already been able to notice it on the roadway. But uh, right here is Corb Isbell's grave. I've uh, not been here in probably, I don't know, 15 years. But Corb Isbell was a logger, I guess you would call him. They, they worked a, a logging community in this area. And when the majority of the people would leave uh, for the season, he would stay there and keep an eye on the place. And according to what I was told, Corb was there on the site by himself with his dog and apparently he was sitting on the edge of the bed and suffered a heart attack and when they found him he was kind of down between the bed uh, and his face against the wall slumped down and the bizarre part is is that was possibly over a week had passed from the time he had passed away and the uh, dog was locked in the house with him and the dog ended up eating part of Corb's hand off so that's the bizarre portion of the story that made the made the whole thing stick in my mind I purchased this Jeep off of an individual about Oh, three months ago now, and uh, it's a 2006 model, and I'd never owned a Jeep before. I've always driven Chevy pickups, but I, I kind of got the fever uh, a few months prior to that. I even drove to Dallas, Texas to uh, look at a Jeep that I'd seen in an ad and uh, made an appointment with the guy. My wife and I made the drive, and... Uh, we traveled all that way, it's over three hours, one direction. And uh, looked at the Jeep, it was a late 80s model. And I really liked it, you know, for, it had, it had been well used, but it seemed to be in fairly good shape. But anyway, we got down to the wire, I decided, yeah, I'll buy the Jeep. Uh, I thought the price he was asking was possibly a fair price. And uh, then the guy says, well, Here's the title, he said, I, I'm not the owner on the title, we bought it off of a guy in eastern Oklahoma and just never have switched it over. And I kind of got fidgety, I thought, you know, the way my luck runs. So I told him, I said, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with uh, what you're doing, I guess I believe you, but uh, with your name not being on the title, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to buy this off of you, I wasn't about to hand somebody cash money. 
and not know the background of the vehicle. So we drove back home and I decided I'm done, you know, I'm just going to stick with my old pickup and uh, maybe this Jeep thing wasn't meant to be. But a couple of months later, I pull in at work and there's a Jeep sitting there in the parking lot. And uh, so I work with the uh, surveillance cameras. So I ran the video back when I got into work and saw who was driving it. It was one of the ladies that worked out on the floor. And so I went by her desk an hour or two later and I said, hey, I like that Jeep. I want to buy it. And actually, I was just popping off. You know, I wasn't even really serious. I just, uh, the kid in me was serious. But she laughed and then about 45 minutes later, she messaged me and she said, hey, you know, uh, if you're really interested in that Jeep, it's my son's. I'm just driving it because my uh, vehicle is broke down. And she said, he's, he's wanting to uh, sell it because he wants to get a pickup. So long story short, I, I went and, and drove the uh, Jeep, and like I said, it's 2006 model. But what intrigued me was it's fairly clean and seemed tight. Not a bunch of rattles and wear as far as visible to my mentality. But anyway, by the time I got the Jeep bought and drove into the driveway at home, the Jeep only had, it had just rolled over onto 24,000 miles and the story behind it is uh, the lady that I work with her husband it was his boss who had the Jeep originally and his boss only used it to deer hunt to go hunting during deer season what have you and so he had owned it for about 10 years and only had like I said, 24,000 miles on it by the time I got it purchased. So I'm praying that this Jeep will last me a while. And at my age, it's quite possible that the, it will be my last. But uh, I never was a Jeep person. I always admired them. And they've, they've always got the uh, label of bulletproof, you know, as far as those motors. And this is a six-speed uh straight six and I actually like the 2006 model they, they started changing the bodies up a little bit long about 2007 and after anyway so I wound up like I said I'm just like a big kid and my wife relented and allowed me to do what I was wanting to do but uh, I'll have to pay for it for a little while but uh, now I've become a jeep addict I'm afraid this thing just handles so well in the in the mud and the rocks it's, Kind of amazing just an update on my trip generally when i head to the mountains i'll send a message to someone just before i'm getting beyond uh, cell phone range letting them know where i'm at in case they run into a problem they'll know where to look uh, so today i did the same thing uh, as i left the mountain area and came back into cell range this evening i got a response to my text and the uh, text stated that uh, they found a dead, partially burned body in your area. Do you know anything about it? And uh, come to find out, uh, the body that they found was less than two and a half miles from where I've been today. So uh, there's a, a twist of bizarre for you. Seems like times don't get any better.